guys it's Shams here and today I'll do a tutorial on how you're going to set up your RC transmitter with Phoenix RC Simulator version 4.0 I'm running version 4.0Q which is the latest at the moment uh, future ones that come out and past ones you may be running one of those it will still work the setup never changed in the past and will hopefully not change in the future so um, here it is looking for the USB interface as you can see on screen here so we'll now show you where on your transmitter you're going to plug that in and on your laptop. Okay guys, so here is the USB interface that I was talking about. I got this with a Phoenix version 3 package I got one to two years ago. It came with Spectrum DX5E transmitter which was my old one. But now you may know from other videos that I'm using the Spectrum DX9. So uh, back to the cable, uh, this is the official one that did come with that set. On one end it has uh, just the USB for your computer and on the other end it's just like it will be on the end of a headphones or earphones or something. It's 3.5mm and this is probably just the box that functions it and puts a power through. So uh, if you got Phoenix online or didn't get it legitimately out of a RC store or online or something, you will... Like if you downloaded it, you will want to get one of these cables, it will not work without that cable. So you can get one of those cables, a fake version of them online for, I would say the maximum you would pay is 20 euro or 25 dollars to get one of them. So if you want one, just leave a comment and I will get you a cheap one and leave a link in the description for it. So first of all, what you're going to want to do is just get the, uh, the USB and plug that into any USB port on your computer. Now, if your computer needs to install drivers, that should just take a couple of minutes, but I'm not sure if it does install drivers for this. And then on your transmitter, this is what varies. So uh, on the DX5V, which was my old transmitter, it was here on the side, exactly where the charger is on the DX9. But now on the DX9, and I would say this is similar with the DX8 or the DX6i or DX7 or something. I would say that's sim similar to this one. So on the right I have the audio for headphones or something and on the left is the two little transmitters for your body lead or your trainer lead. So in this case the Phoenix cable goes straight into the little trainer port there. So go ahead and just get it and plug that in. Okay so now the transmitter as you see has already powered itself up. This powers itself up through your computer. So there's no need to turn it on and if you do not see your transmitter powering up or anything just make sure that you flick it on then it may vary in different transmitters so now that it's turned on we'll turn back to the simulator and show you how to set it up okay guys so i already had my dx9 set up with phoenix rc simulator so on screen you don't see anything or if you started uh, phoenix for the first time and just plugged it in up in the top corner here when i click system and set up new transmitter this is the screen that will automatically be on your screen. So uh, if you don't have that, you've just seen what I've seen. Just go up here, click set up new transmitter, and uh, this will bring you to the screen to set it up from scratch. So go ahead and click next three times, and this is where it'll start. It's going to tell you now to switch all your switches to the zero position or off position. So just take your time now and make sure they're all turned off to get it calibrated correctly. Okay, so mine's are all off. I'll click next again. And now it wants to know the central positions of all the sticks on your transmitter. So what you're going to want to do there is I'll switch over to the other camera and just show you that. Okay, so this is fairly straightforward. Just what it means is to move your throttle stick, whether you're in mode 1 or 2, it'll be on the left or right. You just want to move that up halfway. So on my digital display here, as you can see the little number. You can see this little number here. This might be on other transmitters as well. I'll just move that to 50, which is 50% throttle. Okay, so now as you can see, the two sticks are even. So if you don't have it, just roughly estimate it in the center using these little guidelines on the left. So just once they're both center, you can go ahead and click next. Okay, so once we click next again, it wants to know all the extents on your transmitter. So what this means again is all the sticks in your transmitter in complete circles. So just move them in complete circles, touching every corner. Do it about twice, make sure you've done it correctly. Just put a little bit of pressure on it, make sure you're touching everything. Okay, so once that's Let's done... next again. And now it wants to know all the extents of the switches in your transmitter. So just if you have any switches, depending on the channels in your remote, you just want to flick all of those on and off. 
not the high rate switches or anything because it obviously doesn't pick them up so if you don't see any of your switches working don't worry because phoenix just doesn't pick them up maybe because they're buying switches trainer switches or something like that so i have all my switches now moved so i'll go ahead and click next again okay so this is just a screen for checking your calibration as you can three, see the throttle and channel one is moving up and down uh, channel 4, that is the rudder, that is working correctly, and they all go back to the centre when you're done. Channel 2 is my ailerons, they go back to the centre, and channel 3 is my elevator. You see, they all go back to the centre, that means they're all calibrated correctly. You can flick a couple of switches just to make sure that they calibrated correctly as well. So once you're done, just click finish, and then click next again. And this is the list now where you can select your transmitter. So mine is a Spectrum, but in the Spectrum list, my DX9 is not listed because it only came out in September, October 2013, so it hasn't been updated for that yet. So um, if you have any other transmitters, just click your uh, your brand and then select it. And if it's not there, go up to the top and click My Transmitter is not listed here, and then click Next. And here it wants you to just, you can name this, so I'll name, oops, sorry. I'm not sure why it's not letting me type there. Hmm. Okay, so that's not letting me type. I don't know what that is. So just click Quick Setup and then click Next. Okay, so I'll just name it New Profile because it won't let me type for some reason. So uh, Quick Setup, so click Next. And now it wants to know the center and your sticks again. So you just go roughly estimate back up to about 50%. Okay, so I'm now at 50%, percent i will click next again. And now, what you want to use for a throttle, just move that fully up. Okay, so that's up, click next, oh, oops, I went through two steps there. And now what you want for your collective pitch, this is just your throttle again. As you can see, that's already working. And then we'll click next. And now what you want to use for your ruddy, rudder fully right, just move that fully right. And click next. And what you want to use for your elevator, move fully up. So make sure you're moving these fully up, uh, or whatever direction it tells you, don't move it the opposite way first. So uh, once that's done, click next again. And now for your aileron, move it fully right. Okay, so that's fully right. Sometimes when you move right, it'll leave a little gap about that much there. But don't worry, that's, it's just not picking that up, and that doesn't matter. So click next again. Now uh, use the switch in your transmitter, or a number on your keypad that you're going to want to use for uh, your numpad, sorry. What you're going to want to use for the gear here. So I want to use for the gear, I want to use this switch here. So I'll just click that switch. That is now channel 7. That's set up. Click next. Now it wants to know the, uh, the switch or numpad key for your flaps. So I'll just turn this little dial on my transmitter. Okay, so that didn't pick up. About. Okay, that one. That's my flaps now. I mustn't have calibrated my little dial. So I'll click next again. And now. I have successfully set up my transmitter. If I click finish, and click finish again. So, oops, throttles up. Okay, so now I have the basic setup of my transmitter. So, to get it more advanced, go up into system and click your controls. And now here is my new profile. That was my old one. So this is my new profile now that I just created. So you want to go over and click edit profile. Okay, so up in the top here, you'll be in the simpled or detailed. So in detail here, it's giving me general. So as you can see, my throttle is assigned to channel one. Cut restart engine, you can set that to whatever you want. I won't use that on the simulator, so I won't be setting it. So track gear is set, which is set a minute ago. The wheel brake will flick that and will flick switch. As you can see, it is flashing channel five when I flick that switch. I just want to go down and click channel five, and that is now my wheel brake. You can have bomb drop, uh, low rates, then helicopters, you can move through all your helicopter controls. So if you want to change them, go ahead and do so. Uh, and this is all for your airplane, the fixed wing, you can change them all here as well. And uh, program settings here and total engines. So um, I haven't any of these set, so that doesn't matter, I won't be using that anyway. So just click finish when you're finished configuring it, click finish again. And it will bring the plane back up to us and make sure all the controls are working properly.
Okay, so rudder, yeah, rudder's working the right direction. Okay, so brake's working. <laughs> Found that out. Okay, so taxi it over. Okay, so when I move my aileron left, the left aileron on the plane should go up. Okay, so now we know the ailerons are working correctly. When I go right, right will go up. Okay, so they're both working correctly. Elevator, when I pull back, the elevator should pull up. Yep, that's working correctly. And that forward, it pushes down. My rudder, when I go left, it will tail out left. That's working. And right's working. And my throttle's working. Brakes are working. There's no gear in this plane, so it won't work my gear. And there's no flaps in this plane, so it won't need any flaps. So, um, that is basic, uh, basic and kind of advanced setup of how you'd set up your transmitter with your Phoenix. And, uh, if any of these controls that I just showed you were inverted, just click System, back into your controls, click Edit Profile, select it, click Edit Profile, and you can go into Simple or Detail here, and just this, these little boxes here under the Invert heading, you just tick one of those. So if your ailerons were reversed, you just click that. So I, they were inverted automatically, Phoenix detected that and reversed them back to normal. So you'll just click any of these switches if, you, if they were in the wrong direction and just click finish again to save that. Okay, so that's a basic and advanced setup of your transmitter that is now fully bound to your aircraft on the game. So now you can fly away, practice away. Uh, there will be more Phoenix tutorials coming, there will be more reviews or unboxings of products and plenty of onboard flights uh, coming in 2014 and the years to come. So uh, thank you very much for watching and if this was helpful please click the like button, comment if you need any more help, and subscribe for more content. That would really help me out. So yeah, thanks for watching. Goodbye.